Hi, everyone. Um, welcome to a Delicate Balance Artist Talk and Reception. Here we are um, with our artists and so happy to have everyone here. I know you're all just seeing our little screen. Sophia, why don't you unshare for a second if you can so everyone can see us. Hello, we're all here for those of you who are watching and we're also recording this. Um, so we're just going to introduce everyone and then do a Q&A and you guys can answer some questions at home and that'll be that. Um, doing a hybrid event, which is what we're doing this evening, is a little bit challenging. So please be patient with us as we try out this new and unique format. Sophia, can you go back over to the presentation, please? And I want to thank Sophia Mehta, our intern, who's working from home, and Nate Burks, who's working here on AV. So very happy to have my assistance. All right, so we'll go to our first slide. Our agenda, as I just mentioned, is a bit of Zoom housekeeping. We'll talk about Beacon Gallery and the participants, what we have coming up at the gallery, about the show. I'll introduce you to our three artists, and we'll chat. So we are recording the webinar. And you can use the chat for any questions that you have. Um, this will be put on Beacon Gallery's blog and most likely on YouTube in the coming days if you want to share it with anyone. And this exhibition, A Delicate Balance, is on view through July 17th. Just a few things about the gallery. I'm the owner, Christine O'Donnell. Um, Beacon Gallery has been around for almost five years now, since 2017. We're gonna have a big party in the fall if you wanna come along. Um, and we are committed to producing thoughtfully curated exhibitions like this one that showcase originally original conceptual art and share compelling messages. And we strive to provide a platform that celebrates art and creativity while advocating for those issues that affect us all in our shared society. Some of the things that we have coming up are Martha Chase and Sokol's Artist in Residence. And that will culminate with an exhibition called The Dinner Party at the end of August. And we also in the fall and September have McLean Priestley's and Amy Ford's Art Therapy. Join us for the opening in September. On to a delicate balance. So the art in the show by Dominic Esposito, Nikki Sevier Voik, and Sharon Witham examines the challenge of achieving personal balance in our difficult times and the disparities between our outer facades and our internal emotional states. The work is on view through July 17th. I'm not gonna get into kind of like the deep stuff now because I'm gonna get to talk to you guys in a second, but I would encourage all of you to come in and see it in person for those of you who are listening or watching this at home. Um, you'll have a chance to see some of the artwork as we go through because we have images of it and you'll also be hearing through to hearing from our three artists in a moment about our three artists. Dominic Esposito is a Massachusetts based artist and social advocate activist. His work includes sculptures, paintings, commissions and public art installations. In 2018, he achieved national attention through the massive opioid spoon sculptures he placed at the doorsteps of the FDA and major pharmaceutical giants. His art reflects the forces that haunt our society, our community, our families, and loved ones. Nikki Sevier Voik is a painter and sculptor based in Massachusetts, known for her colorful, realistic acrylic paintings of iconic objects in American cultures. Her paintings explore themes of stereotypes of beauty and a playful sense of irony. She's painted throughout her life, and after a career as a pediatric nurse practitioner, she's now focusing her energies on her art practice full time. And finally, Sharon Witham. Sharon spends part of each year working out of her studio in the Boston area, and another part living on an island off the coast of Maine and creating art in Mexico. She's both a printmaker and a mixed media artist. And her work is inspired both nature, by nature and culture and is focused on themes of balance, loss, and change and our connections to each other in the natural world. She's also a member of an art collective called She, Shared Habitat Earth, 
a group of artists with a shared concern for the environment and the effects of climate change on humans and all flora and fauna on the earth. So I would now ask that we turn off our presentation so we can see who we're talking about and chat for a little bit. Although, Sophia, if you want to turn it back on so that people can see a specific piece of artwork that might be referred to, please feel free. So I have the microphone here. I'm going to ask, we'll, we'll use this as like the thing people, you know, we'll be passing this around so that hopefully people can hear. Um, and you guys can take turns as you're speaking. I have, so I have this, this is kind of a question for each of you. Um, you don't all have to answer, but you can. Artists tend to be drawn to a certain medium or media. What draws each of you to the materials that you worked with for the pieces in this show? Nikki, you're closest to me. Do you want to start? And we'll just kind of go down the road. Sure. So here, you have to take this now. Okay. And try to, I, I think we have to keep it right up to our mouth. Okay. More or less. All right. I love painting. I think I'm drawn to the flow of um, the color and form. Um, I draw, I paint with acrylic paints and they dry quite quickly. And I love to be able to revise my work immediately. And I also love the bold, um, vibrant color of acrylic paint. And I often use opaque uh, colors. And so they really lend themselves well to the uh, representational style of my paintings. I also really prefer a smooth um, paint finish, which is easy to get with acrylics. And it kind of um, downplays the distraction of the texture brush, the brush strokes, which I like very much. Um, it allows the viewer to focus totally on the image, kind of um, gives maximum impact to the flowers. So that is my preferred medium. Thanks. So um, I typically um, use a lot of uh, bronze in my work, and it's a very heavy material. Um, if anyone's ever ever picked up bronze, you'll see just how heavy it is, um, even compared to you know other metals. But I also paint, and I guess what my makes my pieces um, somewhat unusual is I take the bronze and I marry that with uh, oil paintings, right? So I'm able to sort of uh, use the bronze almost um, as a 3D sculpture on top of a 2D oil painting. And it gives this sense of um, uh, this space sort of being uh, taken away from you because this, this sculpture is kind of coming out of the wall. Um, and it also makes it, uh, I feel it makes my art a lot more kind of visceral to the, to the viewer. Uh, anyways, the material is actually very heavy. My subject matter tends to be really heavy um, as well. So, you know, dealing with uh, mental health and substance use disorder. Um, and um, that's uh, primarily um, what I've used. I've also fabricated and done a lot of um, different sculptures in, uh, in metals and mirrors and different other mediums as well, but primarily mostly bronze um, over the last few years. So here, I think I'll pass it over to- It is, it's sweet and tiny. What? Okay, it's like a lipstick or something. <laughs> anyway, hi, I'm Sharon. Um, so I'm primarily a printmaker and um, the pieces that are in this show are all uh, printmaking process. It's primarily a stencil process that I use and I kind of develop by experimentation over time. Um, and it's oil ink on paper. And, and I love printmaking because it's a very whole brain, whole body process. There's a lot of technique involved and then there's a whole aspect where there's a lot of variables that are unpredictable and kind of a letting go and experimentation. And, um, and then it's physical, very physical <laughs> too. So, um, but what I like about using the, um, this particular kind of material for, for portraying um, the stacked stones that are my imagery is I'm, try I'm trying to, sh to show both uh, a heaviness and uh, some kind of solidness, but also some etherealness. And um, so what I'm doing is I'm using the whites of the paper um, for my white. So when I'm putting um, my ink on a plate, I'm doing a lot of wiping, stippling, rubbing away. And, um, 
and then capturing, you know, and then putting the wet paper on it and capturing the, the white of the paper for the white. And so you get this kind of translucency and a glow that you really can't get with directly putting paint or ink on paper. And so it's a kind of an indirect process and it has a lot of, of steps in it that are, you know, really unpredictable and, and so many variables that can change. And, uh, you know, like how wet is the paper, how much pressure of the press, um, how much ink to use. And so uh, the result can be well, maybe something you hope for or sometimes a happy accident and you learn something new or it could be kind of dismal and a little disappointing. And, and so it's kind of a, a balance, uh, trying, you're trying to find that balance. And, and so it kind of works with the imagery that I use about balance. Mm -hmm. We have Sophia is just scrolling through a few of those. Mm -hmm. okay. Sophia is just scrolling through a few of those pieces right now. Um, feel free to show a couple, Sophia, of um, Dominic and Nikki's as well as you go. Um, and I'm just going to go on to a question for Dominic and Sharon, maybe just to go on from what you've already answered so far about the materials you use. Can you describe how your activism and your artistic practice interrelate? Um, Dominic, why don't we give Sharon a break for a second? We'll go back to you. And then after this, Nikki, Nikki, I have a question for you after this. Okay. Thank you. So um, that's a good question. And it's also like, it's, it's hard as an artist to, um, be one and the other. I sort of call myself an artist and activist um, because it's true to who I am, right? And, and I think a lot of art is activism anyways, because you're, you're, it's a language you're speaking and you're showing something, it's, um, it's an emotion. Um, so I, I think all artists are activists anyways, right? But um, maybe not all of them are dropping 800 pound spoons in front of pharmaceutical companies. <laughs> So they're not disruptive or potentially being arrested. So that's different, right? So maybe, you know, I'm, I'm a little bit more on the activist side um, than most artists. So, um, but it's, it's very um, important to my work. Um, I, I really want to showcase a sense of empathy and a sense of compassion for those dealing with um, both mental health and substance use disorder. Um, some of them, a lot of that is sort of intertwined. And I think showcasing my art uh, like that, and if you see the images, um, it'll become apparent on how um, I'm able to do that um, with my art. Again, art is a language that I use to, to, to showcase that. And um, I also do it um, with a separate nonprofit. We I won't get into all, uh, all the details around the nonprofit, but the nonprofit raises awareness around um, addiction, substance use disorder, um, and the opioid crisis. So, um, and so maybe I'll pass it on to uh, Sharon to talk a little bit about her art. Okay, thanks. Uh, so um, my feeling is my art and activism are one and the same. And um, so my, my, my practice has evolved over time um, to um, incorporate both my, my love of, of nature and that inspiration, but also inspiration culturally. And particularly around climate change and that, that's, and so I feel like I really want to put out there something that's meaningful and potentially has an impact for change. And so, um, so that's something that I do in my work. I mean, you can't help but have sort of things that happen around you kind of enter into your conscious or subconscious and it just kind of percolates in there. And, and honestly, you know, you feel kind of, I mean, sometimes it comes out fully formed, you know, and I'm kind of, um, you know, driven to create something. Um, other times it's, um, you know, I look at something and I want to make some changes to it. Um, but in, in addition to wanting to put something out there that, that has an impact, I also am part of a group that Christine talked about before called Shared Habitat Earth, which is a, <clears throat> a group of about 40 artists in the greater Boston area. And we, um, we create art and show art and, um, um, and partner with um, climate change organizations and feature speakers and uh, films and even work with uh, some um, high schools and students. Um, 
uh, around climate change um, to hopefully have an impact for people to see, you know, maybe, you know, so, so the beauty of the earth and how it's been impacted um, in a negative way by what's going on with climate change. And maybe it's kind of easier to see that way and it might shift uh, a perception or opinion and hopefully encourage people to, to act. Mm -hmm. Now, Nikki, on to you. You have a lot of niche subjects that you that you paint. Um, I'm excited, for instance, to be showing your love hearts here in January into February, right before um, Valentine's Day. But another one are these amazing chrysanthemums that we have on the wall here. Can you can you tell us a little bit more about these blossoms? Sure. Yeah. I can. Um, I actually grow. <laughs> I actually grow chrysanthemums not that well. But um, when I started growing them a couple of years ago, I noticed that mine were not coming out uh, to look very much like the ones they show at the Chrysanthemum Society. They were kind of wild looking, sort of um, like little monsters, <laughs> um, unruly and um, not very orderly, not uniform not of uniform color. And I, although I was a little disappointed at first, I grew to really like them. Uh, I like their shape and form and that gardening practice, I don't know how good my gardening practice is, but it grew into a painting practice. Um, and perhaps it's a little bit of rebellion on my part, uh, my way of throwing off society's commands uh, with regard to what we're supposed to look like or how we're supposed to be. Um, so I hope that these flowers make people kind of pause and think about beauty from their own perspective and that imperfection often, although society may judge it as an imperfection is really unique and makes us beautiful. So I hope that's what people get from my work. Thank you. Yes, I love that. <laughs> Excuse me. That idea. <clears throat> Nikki, can you ask the next question? I can't even answer that. <laughs> sure. <laughs> okay. Dominic, <laughs> how do you envision your practice evolving over the next couple of years? What themes are you looking forward to expressing and exploring? Yeah, that's a, it's a tough question as an artist because um, it's... Um, you never know like what comes to mind, right? I mean, like where you want to, like, what you want to explore. And, um, you know, I, I, all of my art has to do with sort of social injustice. I mean, there are a lot of themes that I, I, I want to start exploring. And so maybe this would be a good time to just brainstorm about some of those, but a lot of it, it um, has to do with sort of um, corporate greed and how um, we are kind of, there's this sort of sense of marketing that happens all the time, whether it's social media, whether it's, you know, watching TV. And sometimes it's so subliminal that we don't even know it. Right. And so it's not that subliminal. It's like in your face, right. You, when you watch um, advertising and this pressure for materialism. Right. And I think it um, has kind of undone a lot of um, it's created a lot of issues, um, whether it's, you know, mental health or it's sort of this sense of, of wanting and wanting more and creating also, you know, the, all the fallout issues, right? Whether it's, you know, it's the environment and um, things that do we really need three cars? Do we need, you know, do we need five TVs? Do we need, you know, two living rooms? Do we need, you know, a dining room and a kitchen? You know, so this, you know, it's, um, it's, you know, those kind of questions, you know, and uh, I'm not sure how that comes across in art <laughs> yet. Uh, I mean, I have some notions of it, but um, we'll see, but it's exploring um, sort of, that angle, and um, and I think maybe in in a, in, a, in a couple of years, um, I'll be moving something along those lines, but I don't know yet. So sounds great. Okay. All right. I guess I'll I'll talk about the the near term anyway. Like Dominic said, I'm not totally sure about how how far off what's going to happen, but um, but right now I am continuing to add to a body of work around climate change, and. Um, like some of the pieces here in the show that have birds on on stacks of stones, um, 
I've been uh, doing a series called Birds of No Paradise, which is about you know, um, the effects of climate change on birds losing their, their habitat, their food, all those kinds of things. And then also um, other endangered sea creatures, whales, um, octopus, and things like that. Um, in, in addition to that, I'm really keeping my eye on what's going on with the Supreme Court decision around Roe v. Wade and what's going on with, um, you know, the kind of reversing um, of, of women's reproductive rights. And so I feel like I've already created some work around that, um, but I think that's probably gonna enter in more. Um, and I'm in the middle of a, of a big project related to COVID and the pandemic about what we have lost, um, sort of a global grief project, um, collaborating with some other artists. And then as far as the act, my actual materials, I have started to um, kind of go outside the box or outside the frame, so to speak, and not be flat. And so I'm going more three-dimensional and creating structures that I'm gonna be, um, you know, like paper mache and wrapping some of my hand pulled prints around them, which has been really kind of exciting, trying this more three-dimensional thing and um, exploring that. All right. Make sure you answer this question too. <laughs> okay. My answer is going to be a little different. Um, I am going to continue painting flowers because I really am drawn to painting them. I look forward to um, composing even more wild and unruly flower compositions. <laughs> so that'll be fun. My gardening will help me with that, no doubt. Um, my next project I have planned is uh, going to sound silly compared to you two, but uh, I am planning to paint Barbie shoes. I can hardly wait to paint, um, <laughs> to paint, uh, you know, the classic vintage Barbie shoe, which is, you know, pink plastic and completely unyielding. And um, I am going to paint more modern Barbie, Barbie shoes because they are equally as bizarre. And uh, I kind of see it as a uh, modern torture device and a subtle indoctrination process all rolled into one. <laughs> so, no comment. <laughs> <laughs> so I look forward to doing that. I have a substantial collection of shoes at the moment, but I need more. I, I would like to do- uh, Barbie shoes. Yes, Barbie, Barbie shoes, shoes. yes. Yeah. I don't really collect shoes myself, okay. actually, but Barbie shoes. Um, I mean, I was a kid in the 70s, so I played with these Barbies, and I feel like it is sort of a way to indoctrinate women that they should look a certain way and wear a certain thing and I don't like that so I'm going to find a way to make fun of it anyway I um also want to do some sculptures with those so I'm kind of still work formulating that plan but I also paint candy and toys so I'm going to keep doing that um and all in a similar theme of sort of poking fun at the stereotypes of appearance and beauty and trying to get people to look at these things themselves and decide for themselves what they think is valuable I love it. Thank you. I think my voice has come back. Thank you for the assist. Allergies are killing me these days. Um, before we take any potential questions from the audience, um, both in here and online, I'd like to ask each of you if you have any advice or one piece of advice you'd give to an artist who's just starting out. That's a question I love to ask anytime I have an artist talk. It doesn't have to be long or complicated, but one little piece of advice. We'll just go down the row here. Sure. Um, I would say be just be yourself and um, follow your what makes you creatively thrive, um, what you love to do. And I think that is the recipe for success. And also be really open to new experiences and think big. I think that's helpful too. Um, I, I would say uh, don't um, don't take rejection personal. Um, just find use it as a challenge um, to better yourself as an artist and uh, and just move on. And and I think you know I, I think the statistic is you get told no nine out of ten times in art or something like that. And um, and just keep going. And so that that would be my advice. <laughs> hmm. 
I would say, you know, it's, it's normal to feel like, um, you know, questioning your work, maybe your work is not good enough or related to, you know, people saying, you know, judging it or whatever, or how are you going to make a living at it? Um, and I would say just stick with it, just do the work um, because you will, you will figure out how to, how to get by and your, your work will grow and evolve and it will have meaning and your life will have meaning. And uh, my, my, my father-in-law, who was an artist, used to say, you know, being an artist is like 10% inspiration about 90% hard work. And, and there really is some truth to that. And you just have to keep at it. All excellent advice. All excellent advice. Thank you very much. Um, are there any questions out here in the audience that anyone has? Yes. Questions for each of you. Here, I'm going to come over. So you, you get the you get the mic now. <laughs> I feel like Barbie with my teeny like <laughs> my teeny microphone. So I'm Jessica again, and I love this exhibition. It's beautiful. And I have a question for each of you. I'm going to start with Sharon. It's more about your creative process and the technique that you use to print. I was looking at the rocks that they're pala, and it's a silly question, but I wonder if you print one at a time or you print all at the same time. Okay, so my, my process is sorry. I need to speak <laughs> the little microphone. Okay, so my, my process is that I actually draw the rocks first and I cut the shapes out of Yupo paper, which is like a plastic paper. And then sometimes I template out what I'm doing, but other times I don't. And then I actually paint on that flat surface. And then I lay them out mostly at the same time, depending on if I you know, like it or don't like it after it's gone through the press on a piece of plexiglass. And then I lay wet paper on it and put it through the press. And so the wet paper pulls all the ink you know, off of those shapes. So after it goes through, and I, then I look at it and see if, I, if, I, if, if it works, if I like it. And so if not, I may put it through again, add in more shapes or, or put the same shapes in with more color on them or whatever needs to be done. So, um, so I do tend to do them in general at the same time, okay? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Next. Next, I'm going to go with Dominic. I was very Here, impressed. Okay, uh, I want to ask Dominic about that sculpture that you have there with the mirrors. Uh, I fix made. I wondering about who inspired you. It just you remind me a little bit of Damien Hirst uh, filling the void, that exhibition that he made with all these pills. And I don't know. It just it made me think about it. But I want to know what's your inspiration for it. Sure. And here we're going to see it on screen as well for the folks at home. No, oh, thank. That's um, the piece is called, um, as Christine pointed out, it's called "Fix Me." So it's all these mirrors that are um, kind of juxtaposed on each other, and it really is. It's it's more about how we run to our own medicine cabinet for every single ailment like you know our society where societal pressures to actually be at this kind of steady state of i call it numbness rather than actually feel emotion and don't get me wrong i'm not completely i'm not against medicine in general people do need it um, but sometimes um you know we're, we over prescribe for even the smallest emotion right you're feeling sad because of grief you know here's Here's a, here's a benzos or here's something else. And uh, so, um, you know, it's okay. I think what I'm saying with that is it's okay to feel emotion, you know, whether it's, um, you know, um, breakups or grief or whatever it is or happiness, you know what I mean? And I think um, we forget that, um, I think, as a society. So that that's what that piece speaks to me as an artist. But what I love is when people have their own interpretation of it. Um, so I'd love to have the question back to you. <laughs> like, what's your interpretation of it? <laughs> I was looking at the pills. It's a great, it's a wonderful sculpture. They, it caught my eye the moment I walk in. I love the light behind it. And it does make me think of when you're just probably hangover or something, you just run to the cabinet and 
fill yourself with pills or to your point that process of avoiding pain or just going through a more natural process it's very interesting thank you yeah. And my last question is for Nikki. I wanted to ask you a couple of questions about first with the flowers. So you're a gardener and I wanted to ask what's your favorite flower to paint? And my second question is about the Barbie thing. So I'm very curious about it. I am all uh, pro, of course, like most of us, uh, female empowerment, but I grew up with a Barbie in the 90s, you know, and the perception of Barbie in the 70s from the 90s, I think is quite different, because when I was a child, Barbie was like this empowered woman that could do anything she wanted, and later in my adult life, I read that Barbie actually is the only woman that has had any profession, like all professions in the world, oh. so I, I just, so I it just, I thought it was interesting, this difference in how they switch their marketing and how to present Barbie to the girls, including of my generation, you know, that it was about like be professional. You can be professional and be girly, but be who you want to be. So that's all. Thank you. Um, actually, all the flowers are chrysanthemums. So that is my favorite flower. Um, I love the shape of it's a irregular in curve usually that I'm painting. That's a type of chrysanthemum. Um, with regard to Barbie, yeah, I was, uh, I'm quite a bit older than you are. So, uh, and I know Barbie has many different careers now. I was even reading about a, um, a primate uh, researcher who's a woman who had a Barbie made in her image, which I think is very cool. Jane Goodall? No, it was someone else, yeah. Um, but I, I think that's cool, but I, Barbie still disturbs me because Barbie, you know, has a certain physical, uh, physical attributes that are really, they're not real. And when I was a kid, Barbie's foot could not become flat. It was pointed. She could only walk on her toes. It changed. Yes, now she has an articulating ankle. Isn't that nice? <laughs> so I still have kind of a grudge against Barbie. So, <laughs> but I can understand why you would see it differently. Yes. Especially the shoes. So. Yes, I am. Um, yeah, I have a lot of foot pain. That might have something to do with it. <laughs> yeah, thank you for your questions. Are there any other questions here? Um, and Nate, can you see if there are any questions? I don't, I'm not seeing any, um, I think, in the audience out there. Oh, we have two questions here. We'll go for you and then Jen, and we also have Cam, or maybe Cam did and then Jen. Yes. So, uh, here. For, oh. if you don't mind. Thank you. Thank you. Well, it's small as Mike. Uh, this question for Sharon. Um, so, I noticed in all your works uh, with the stones that there's an odd number of stones. Uh, now, the one work that has the bird sitting on top of the stones, if you count the bird as an object, then, that, then that's five objects, right? So, so and, and so I was just curious if that was intentional and if so, you know, what was your intention behind that? A fascinating question. <laughs> I'm, I don't feel like I noticed that. And now I'm feeling like I, I'm not nearly as observant as you. Yes, it is intentional. I like I like I, I only want to use odd numbers on I don't know I I, I find something um, more interesting in that configuration and um, as a you know because this this is about balance but it's also about precarious balance. So it is, it is intentional. Yes. That's like, thank you for noticing. <laughs> yeah. I love when we have people in here who are really looking at the art like that. We're going to go for Camden first. Can we make it over there? There she is. Um, so this is actually for Nikki. Like, why did you choose like the colors you did for the flowers? Cause like not all of them are like colors that chrysanthemums would actually like be. Is there like a reason the colors you chose? Very interesting question. Thank you. Um, I think almost none of them are flower, actual flower colors. <laughs> I um, chose those colors because they further kind of accentuate their wildness um, and they're unexpected. 
and kind of help you look at the flower as more of an object as opposed to just a flower, which is supposed to look a certain way. So that is why I chose those colors. We've had a lot of really good observations in the room this evening. I love that. And now on to Jen. So my question is about the past couple of years, the pandemic and the isolation and the cultural changes and how that's affected your process and also the, the subjects or if it has affected the subjects or the topics of your work. Is this a question for everyone? For everyone. For everyone. Okay. And maybe we'll, unless anyone has a burning question, maybe we'll end it with that because that kind of seems like a good one to close things up with for each of you. Um, why don't we start with you? Okay. Kind of Go back down the line. Um, okay, yes, it certainly has has had an impact. Um, I had a lot more time, number one, over the last couple of years to actually be in my studio and um, not have as many distractions and be more focused. But I found myself um, being, of course, being affected by what was going on around me. In fact, um, there were so many things, not just the pandemic, but there was the, the Black Lives Matter thing early on. And now more recently, you know, I mean, not, not just only recently, but all the, the gun violence. And, 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 I've, and I've, I've, I did a whole body of work that was about um, immigration um, called Between a Rock and a Hard Place. And then after the Black Lives Matter, I, I mean, I went out and I took a walk and I collected a bunch of things and I went back into my studio and I just ripped up all my prints. So like I just started ripping and then like putting them together and incorporating things in them that I had found. Um, and, and that became a body of work called The Weight of Race. And then another body of work where I was finding connections between disparate pieces of artwork and I felt like it was a, like a real cathartic experience. Like I was grieving, almost like a global grieving for what we have lost over the last couple of years, but then finding some hope and some new connections in there. Thanks. So yeah, in terms of process, I think um, um, during the pandemic, I was, me personally, I was incredibly productive. I think maybe because I'm, you know, because I was, you know, alone, um, I, you know, as an introvert, you're sort of, you know, alone in your studio. And I think, you know, March of 2020 until uh, my first show after it was like kind of mid 2021, I think I did like 35 pieces. And I don't even look back at that time. Like, I don't even know how I was able to do that. And, uh, you know, you're spending eight or nine hours alone, just kind of making work. And it's also very inspirational because there's a lot happening in the news. And so your, your mind is going and just like Sharon, you're thinking about a lot of stuff. Um, and in terms of the work itself, it did evolve into this hoodie figure because for me, it was about um, a lot of the isolation and loneliness that was happening around us and people dealing with substance use disorder, um, you know, that's, um, it's, it's really bad. In fact, we know we saw uh, death rates double during the pandemic. Um, we saw a lot of uh, people because uh, suffer from it because not being able to go to therapy, not be able to get help, not be able to get medic medication. So, um, and I wanted to show that in, in my work and that's, you know, a lot of the, the, um, uh, the series I did with the, with the hooded, figure kind of really showed that isolation in the in the in the dropped shoulders and um anyways that's that's basically the last couple of years for me um i think that i actually ended up painting less fewer flowers than i had been um which for me is probably my more serious work and i painted a lot of candy and toys, <laughs> which was, I think, oh, my way of medicating myself uh, over what I found to be kind of a depressing situation, a whole pandemic and the isolation. I am a little bit more of an extrovert. And I don't like isolation that much. So I think that's how I dealt with uh, the pandemic, candy and toys. <laughs> a lot of people are eating real candy. So. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Thanks for asking. <laughs> All right, well, thank you all so much for, thank you our artists for being here, my helpers for helping me this evening.
and all the people who came here in person and attended online. Um, again, this was recorded, so people can go back and check it out or ask questions afterwards. I would invite anyone who's not following the gallery to follow us um, at, at Beacon Gallery on Instagram and follow the artists as well. Um, do you guys want to say your handles right now, or do you remember your handles? Or you can find them on Beacon Gallery. Yeah, well, we can. Go ahead. We want to start. Mine is just my name, Nikki Sevier Boy. I'm here. Uh, Dominic underscore Esposito underscore metal. And mine is Shasha dot art. Mm -hmm. All right. Thank you all. Let's sign off here. Uh, thank you. And have a good evening. Whoever's in control over there can stop it. <laughs> thank you all. Thanks. Thank you guys.